DEA, the DEA's drug and chemical evaluation section chief, his name is Terrence Booz, responded saying that as long as psilocybin mushroom spores have not been germinated into psilocybin containing fruiting bodies, then the spores are federally legal. And the reason why that that's an important thing is because this has been a topic of deba debate in the mushroom community for a very long time. Can you buy a spore kit? Can you sell spore kits? Can you sell spores? Is it okay? Is it illegal? What's going on? And it's been this very murky gray area, decades long debate, honestly. And uh, last week or, or a few days ago, the DEA decided or the DEA said that it is not illegal to be moving around spores. And the reason why is because uncultivated spores do not contain psilocybin or psilocin and are currently uncontrolled under the Controlled Substances Act. It's one of the loopholes that's helped generate access to magic fungi in, you know, in, in the decades prior and currently. Um, yeah, so that's kind of the gist of this whole piece. Uh, the DEA, the best quote from this story by Marijuana Moment, the best quote is uh, by what's his name um terence booze the quote is if the mushroom spores or any other material do not contain psilocybin or psilocin or any other controlled substance or listed chemical the material is considered not controlled under the csa however if at any time the material does contain a controlled substance psilocybin or psilocin upon germination for example the material would be considered a controlled substance under the csa so while that's really great and that kind of opens up a lot of um you know opportunities for people who sell spore kits to either get on the market or continue pushing on the market um keep in mind however that the police still have arrested or utilizing spore kits but it's possible that that could be connected to whether these spore kits are considered drug paraphernalia and basically how they are marketed. And furthermore, there are states such as California and Georgia and Idaho that currently prohibit psilocybin mushroom spores and like moving them into the state, shipping them, etc. So that creates some issues. But what's also interesting is that this this topic actually brings up a it actually mirrors the um another DEA paradox, which was addressed in a separate earlier letters from this same guy from the DEA. And it's basically whether or not uh, seeds, cannabis seeds that produce the plant are legal or they're not legal. And that was a big, that was like a big issue. Um, it, I mean, it still kind of is in some ways, but um, basically the seeds that produce the plant are, are not illegal as long as they do not contain more than 0.3% THC by dry weight. You're able to buy them, sell them, move them, and that's cool. Yeah, that's basically the gist of it. And so the DEA kind of put to rest a huge debate that's been in the community for a very long time between people who uh, love mushrooms, sell mushrooms, uh, move around, spore kits, etc. So this th this is a win for people right here, Mary. If you're selling spores, you're 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 yeah. winning right now. Absolutely, this is done. I mean, I mean, yeah, it's like it's like when you break these things down there, it's obvious, right? It's logical. And that's what everyone's been saying for so long. It's like, you know, because the the spores for those that don't know, like they're the reproductive you know, stage of the, the cells of the mushroom. So like that's the seed essentially. And then the mycelium, which is something completely different, which what, you know, people are doing is like inoculating bags without fruiting bodies. They're saying it's you know, benign. It's not going to be like some crazy thing. So I don't know. I'm all for it. I think, um, you know, I think just let those things go, baby. They're in the air anyway. Just let them, let them keep going. I mean, this is, them... th th this has been the case for a lot of laws th throughout, can throughout throughout my lifetime of cannabis it was like you know like you can you can go into a store and buy a bong but you can't get caught with a bong right <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah so, right, so it's right. like it's, it's the same Water thing fight. it's like yeah you can you can Absolutely. order the spores you can do whatever but you can't get caught with any of it once it turns yeah. into whatever it's supposed to turn into that's that's so funny that you mentioned that a lot of people don't even understand that we had to go back to we had to go to the uh the freakies uh, for all the people yeah. that know freaky shout out freakies 
you know, uh, in Denver. But like, you had to go there and say, "Hey, I want a, I want a tobacco pipe. I want a water." Yeah, tobacco you want, pipe. you want a water pipe. All the time. You want a water you pipe or a tobacco here, pipe. Even or, say bong. You yeah, you couldn't, you couldn't even say bong. You get kicked out. You'd be eighty six. Yeah, yeah. I, I brought a slide. I brought the slide for my bong that broke. You know, I, yeah. I didn't know like the millimeter. I needed to check it, so I brought that with me one time. I remember I was like sixteen years old, and they fucking kicked me out of the place because yeah. they had like weed residue. Because they had weed residue. Exactly. <laughs> You're just stinking up the place with all that. Bammer weed, some like sixteen-year-old in the in the shop, yeah. also and all that know. all that dry-ass Colorado <laughs> booth out there. At that time, we had the homegrown. We had the homies' dad growing the homegrown. You know, we were just selling us little dime bags in high school, like that. Yeah, you know, nice. that's what the deal was. Now we had chronic, but we were definitely smoking the 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 stress. You know, that was definitely a thing in high school. Mm -hmm. I confront. I'm not from Cali. I'm not spoiled like you Cali kids out here. Sucks for you.